Hey there guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how I take lumber from the hardware store and turn it into blocks that I can use to refill parrot toys. So if that's something you guys are interested in seeing or you want to maybe do yourself as a weekend project, you want to make sure to stick around because that's going to be coming up right after this. <music> Guys, this is Jack over at High Red Bird, where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. And one of the ways that I wanted to show that is by how I make wooden blocks for parrots. Um, especially if you have bigger parrots, things like macaws or cockatoos, you guys know that that large beak, which is continuously growing, needs the ability to be worn down on things. Uh, one of the best ways to do that is to encourage the shredding and destruction of appropriate materials. So making toys out of things that your bird is able to destroy um, is a great way to promote their mental stimulation, to allow them to wear them that beak as they need to, uh, and it can just be a whole lot of fun. Um, now you guys can make these without coloring them, but I am going to show you the entire process from taking the lumber, cutting it, uh, dyeing it. I made these with untreated two by fours, um, but this same approach can be used on a variety of different thicknesses of lumber. Um, so you can use this exact same approach if you have smaller birds. Uh, and I would love to hear from you guys. What types of birds do you have? Leave a comment down in the comment section and that way I can tailor these videos to you guys. But without further ado, let me go ahead and jump into how we're going to be making these blocks. All right, guys, so I am going to be using a miter saw to make my cuts. This is also known as a chop saw. And you guys can see that I took a scrap piece of lumber and a clamp and attached it to the saw. That gives me a nice stop so that I can measure these blocks to all be the exact same size. Uh, it makes it really, really easy to make these cuts a little bit quicker. But I am going to say, if you are doing this, you know, don't try to rush it. Make sure you're being as safe as possible. Uh, you guys will notice that I am wearing glasses, eye protection, ear protection with noise-canceling headphones. Make sure you're paying attention to those things. You want to make sure that you're doing this safely because the goal is to be able to come up with parrot toys that are a little bit cheaper. And if you have to factor in an emergency uh, room visit, they're not going to be that much cheaper. Now, I am using untreated lumber. Um, I don't want it treated with any chemicals or anything that could be potentially hazardous to my bird. Uh, and you want to make sure that you're using a wood that is safe for your bird to get. In this instance, I am getting pine. Depending on what is available in your area, there may be some woods that you want to try to avoid. So just make sure that you're paying attention to things like that uh, when you are going through, when you are picking out your materials for this. Now, again, I am trying to make them all uh, the same size. I'm going to be doing a couple of different two by fours in different cuts, but that block makes it really easy to do these cuts quickly. All right, guys, now when it is time for me to drill my blocks, I'm going to be using uh, a drill and drill bit. Um, and I want to make sure that I drill them so that they can easily be threaded on whatever toy holder I am using. In this case, I am using a stainless steel skewer. So I want to make sure that that hole is big enough to accommodate the skewer. Uh, but obviously, once I put that acrylic ball on the end, that it's not going to fall off. Um, make sure that you're choosing a drill bit that is appropriate for whatever hanging mechanism you are wanting to use. Uh, the Stainless steel skewer, because it's rigid, goes through that hole pretty easily. So I can pretty much have it just the same size, if not a little bit bigger. Um, if I was wanting to thread these on something like stainless steel chain, which can be a lot flimsier, I'd probably want to make that hole a little bit bigger just to accommodate it. Now, one really nice thing that I have going for me here 
I am drilling these blocks on a picnic table, which means I can drill right through. I line it up with the gap in the slats on the picnic table, so I'm not going to damage this table by drilling into it. Um, if you don't have a picnic table like this at your disposal, um, you can always put a scrap piece of lumber underneath just to make sure that you don't damage whatever surface you're working on. Now I did want to show you guys, I've got a couple of different blocks here and you can drill them however you want. So you see most of them, I am drilling them uh, through the shortest section, but this one I'm going through a longer section of it. That's going to sit differently on a skewer. It's going to look different to my bird. It's going to give me so many different options. Now I'm just going to go ahead and keep drilling these blocks until I'm all done with them, which uh, does not really take that long once you get into a good rhythm. Now, when it comes to actually using the die, you want to make sure that you protect your work surface. Uh, this is die. It can stain, so you want to have a non-permeable table covering. Here I just have a trash bag that I clamped into place. I also put that scrap lumber there, so I know that my tarp is not going anywhere. You guys can see that I'm wearing gloves. Um, now, I'm going to be using the Vita Critter die. I've shown you guys how to mix this up. Uh, if you've never used it before, I can't recommend it highly enough, so I'll actually put a link to that video showing how to mix it up in the, com or in the description section for this video. Now, I am going to just go ahead and drop my blocks into the plastic containers with the dye. They don't really have to soak. You just want to flip them. The cat litter scoop that I'm using right there works really, really well on really, really small pieces. Um, if you're dyeing things like beads or popsicle sticks. Using it in these giant blocks was a little bit of overkill. Um, so in the end, I ended up just flipping them by hand. It worked so much better. You guys can see just how uh, much color these guys have already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line these up on, these are just baker's grids. Um, I want to make sure that I can encourage as much airflow over those blocks as they are drying. Um, I don't like to stack the blocks on top of each other um, because if that wood is touching wood, it doesn't get adequate airflow. It'll stay wet in those spaces. Um, that's also part of why I like to drill my blocks before I dye them because I get impatient and I will dye the blocks. I'll think they're fine and then um, go to pick them up because I want to drill them because I want to go ahead and make parrot toys and they're not dry yet. So if I drill them and then I set them up on the drying rack, I can very easily leave that until the next day. Um, but you guys can see <laughs> the Vita Critter will splash up. So make sure you're wearing clothes. You don't mind getting a little bit dirty. Um, make sure, again, you have that table covering to protect your space. But you just use this die to dye all of your wood blocks. Now you can definitely rearrange your blocks if you need to, just to make the best use of your space. Um, again, trying to have them with space between them on that drying rack, it just definitely helps them dry out a little bit better. Now, one thing I hate is I have seen people dye a batch of toys with Vita Critter and then throw it away. And I think that is so incredibly wasteful because you can do what I'm doing here. Um, after I'm done using that dye, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pour it back into this bottle and I will be able to use this next time I wanna dye toys this shade of green. After dyeing an entire tray's worth of blocks, um, you guys can see I only used about a quarter of the Vita Critter dye. Now it is just rinse and repeat if you wanna do another color. Uh, I am going to encourage you guys though to only try to do a couple of colors on any given day. Don't try to get all of the colors done. Um, you'll drive yourself insane. Um, first of all, you guys can see that I'm using a separate drying grid. Um, I want to make sure that I'm not putting the pieces of different colors next to each other because that dye will really easily pick up 
on the other blocks. So you could end up with spots. Uh, depending on the color combinations that you are doing, um, you could end up with something that's gray or brown or you know, just not really the, the bright, fun color that you were going for um, to begin with. Now, uh, with these bigger blocks, you guys can see I take a little bit more time. I want to make sure that I drain off as much of that Vita Critter as possible because, again, I am going to be reusing this dye the next time that I want to make purple toys. So I did want to show you guys how I was going to use these blocks to make a really simple toy. This is a destructible toy. It encourages the shredding of these wooden blocks, but it's also a foraging opportunity. Um, and honestly, most parrot toys can be a foraging opportunity if you work hard enough for it, or realistically, if you work at all for it. It doesn't take that much effort to do. Um, here, I'm just going to be alternating these blocks, purple and green. Uh, I'm going to be honest, that's more because it's visually appealing for me. I don't know that my bird really cares one way or the other, um, but I can just go through, I can alternate these, and uh, it's going to work really, really well for hiding all sorts of items. So I want to give myself a little bit of slack. If I completely pack this skewer full of blocks, I'm not going to have the ability to load it the way that I want to. So now all I'm going to do is take, um, I have some whole almonds, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, attempt multiple times and fail several times, um, but eventually I will get an almond to just sit in there. The weight of the blocks will then hold those items in place. So I'm going to be using things like, uh, here's whole leaves of collard greens and whole almonds. It's just a really fun way to encourage my bird to be a little bit more excited, a little more interactive with this toy. Um, so definitely think about how you can incorporate foraging as a part of your bird's normal toys um, because it really isn't that difficult to incorporate. Now the two lucky recipients of this toy are a pair of cockatoos. Uh, the one you can see is Snowy, the umbrella cockatoo, and then there's also Tilden, the Moluccan cockatoo. And I wanted to show that there's a couple of different ways that you can use large toys like this. Um, first of all, Tilden was just very, very excited by me being in the enclosure, and Snowy was a little bit intimidated by the camera and tripod. So you guys can see that she is using that toy as a visual barrier to just get away from the tripod because um, it's a little bit scary. And oh, hey, while she's hiding, she'll go ahead and start picking out some of those items that are on there. Uh, you guys can see that within seconds, uh, most of the corners and edges of these blocks are already uh, starting to show some wear and tear. It does not take a pair of cockatoos very long at all to totally destroy a toy like this. Um, but that's part of the fun. Getting to see these birds so excited about a project is a whole lot of fun, um, especially when you consider making toys like this, dyeing the wood, cutting the wood can be a little bit difficult. Um, it can definitely be time consuming, but then you see your animals interact with things like this uh, and it definitely makes it worthwhile. So I certainly hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope it gave you some ideas and maybe you want to think about doing something like this as a weekend project. I definitely would encourage that. I'm sure your birds would as well. Now you want to make sure that you subscribe to the High Redbird YouTube channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any fun videos and I will see you guys next time. I do need to say thank you to my Patreon patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can find out more by visiting High Redbird on Patreon or clicking the link in the description section down below if you would like more information. Thanks.